give you a good idea of how people are feeling about the disappointment, the inaction on immigration reform. Just look at what happened the night before the State of the Union address. Many civil rights and immigration advocate leaders staged civil disobedience in front of the headquarters of the Department of Homeland Security for roughly two hours, completely willing to be arrested. There's a lot of unrest right now. There's a fair amount of uh, disenchantment immediately after the speech. But then again, a fair amount of people pretty much expected that too. But I'd say the, the disappointment has very quickly um, transformed into a feeling of uh, determination and um, commitment. Because uh, we're going to do this. I just think Sheriff Joe is too obvious an example of the nastier parts of the human being in today's societal context than our nation wants to affiliate itself with. A man like this gets away with a lot in the Deep South and in the Southwest when he's rounding up Mexicanos, and we know why that is, and we also know why a black president today in the U.S. can't just swiftly move in to crush, stop a, uh, a, a old white racist sheriff from rounding up Mexicanos by the border. There's a reason uh, that Joe Arpaio in the past was so politically viable. Reports are coming in that he is becoming toxic, that even Sheriff Joe in the Southwest rounding up Mexicanos is yet becoming toxic because the man's just out of control. It's not just Mexicanos anymore. He will unleash the full force of his uh, law power on other lawmakers quite capriciously, and um, it's coming to light uh, without merit. So this guy's abusing all kinds of laws, and I think he's out of control. I think the man can't help himself, and he's basically out of control. I think it's just a matter of time before he gets reined in but what I wanted to say was keep at it. Keep blogging, keep making the paintings, uh, keep making the art, keep making the poems, keep making the calls, keep sending the letters. Don't lose spirit there, because I'm, I'm, I'm positive that we're gonna get this <laughs> out of there. But um, we have to keep telling the story. We have to keep reminding everyone um, why this has to happen. And, and that's up to us. Some of you probably know, I am no longer writing the Weekly Diaspora, which was an immigration roundup column that I have been writing for the last 13 months or so for the Media Consortium. Uh, there's a post on my blog, goes into great length about how that was and, and how it ended, and some of the context around it, and take that for what it's worth. I'm not dwelling on that. I'm moving right forward. People are used to coming to my blog and getting an overview by now, weekly, on immigration matters. For various reasons, some of them very defensible and understandable, um, I could not link beyond a certain group of websites for this job because this job's purpose was to boost their collection of members. All very understandable. Uh, that's what businesses are about, media consortiums are about. Uh, but. It was frustrating to me, because I'm coming at it from a different angle. I'm coming at it from a more idealistic angle of, I just want the Roundup to give a good feel of what's going on everywhere in the blogosphere, not just in these independent news sites. That's not useful to me, to limit it there. So I'm going right ahead, doing, I'll be doing a weekly uh, immigration Roundup called the Weekly Undocument, and I'll be including bloggers, I'll be including independent news sites. I'll be, in de uh, be including mainstream news sites. I'll be in including information I get from my DC sources. I'll be including um, information I get from people on the street. So I'm just going to try and, and round up all of that and put it in one place. I feel good about it. My first posting of the weekly undocument seemed pretty successful. Got double the retweets 
I ever got it most on the diaspora and uh, seemed to be received well. So I'm going to keep up with that. Um, obviously, it doesn't pay what the last one did. So if you find it useful and you want to see these kind of things continue, uh, I'll include a link to PayPal. So if you can, because I know we're all strapped right now, but if you can and you have a few bucks, you want to give some support and say, please keep doing this, hit that tip jar link. I'm still going to try to do it anyway because, you know, I'm doing it uh, for different reasons than money. And one last thing. Howard Zinn. Salud, bro. You were the real deal. Um, bringing truth to the people. Getting out in the street whenever possible and out, out in the mix when you could. Reminding us the danger of hidden histories and bringing us a much clearer, broader picture. You have influenced countless people. Um, and I know just my two oldest children have received your books from me at one time or another. Uh, I think your books should be part of every school's curriculum. Um, but you have changed my life. You have helped me. Um, I want to say you'll be missed. But you've left us a wealth of positive energy, belief, and truth. And it's not going anywhere. Your work and influence will resonate and ring out for forever, I think, for as long as people are on this planet, even if they don't know it. Just like every musician is influenced uh, by the Beatles, Bob Dylan, in some way, even if they don't know it. Or, well, we can't say every musician, of course, but or can we? It is Dylan, after all. We recognize Howard Zinn. We salute him as he moves on to the next plane. And we carry on the good work of which he was always sure to be a part of. Thanks for joining me here at News with Neswa. I will see you next week for the last episode before I split to Mexico for a little while. I'll see you then. Thanks for joining me.